It's finally time to finish up our tube bending stand that we made for our tube bender, because I got some bending to do. If you missed the video where I made the stand for my tubing bender, I'll put a link to it right up here. For this one, we're going to attach our air over hydraulic ram. Now the original plan was to build my own bracket tree, but the good people over at Swag Off Road did all the engineering so I don't have to sit here for three days scratching my head trying to figure out how to make it work. And then when it doesn't work, try to figure out what went wrong and how to fix it. And even after you buy some of the parts to build your own bracket tree, you're probably gonna save yourself a little bit of money, but your time and your effort and your expenses, it's well worth it just to spend the money and buy the one that's already been engineered. Now, if you're not a good welder or you don't have a decent welder that can weld quarter inch, then they actually sell one that has been welded for you. It just costs a little bit more money, but I opted to save myself a few dollars and go with the unwelded one. Now, right off the bat, I can already tell this is quality stuff because it is heavy. It comes with your colored instructions, although it's kind of self-explanatory. Clamp piece, sticker for extra horsepower. Got some bolts. These brackets will need to weld on. Bag full of bits, which includes this cool little thumb dial thing. And this, again, feels pretty solid. It's not plastic. It's made of steel. This will be so you can shut and close the valve to release pressure on your cylinder. Another tube here we'll have to weld on, including the bushings. When we weld this on, we can't have the bushings in there, so we'll just go ahead and take them out now. And then, of course, your main plate. So first things first, I'm going to clean this up a little bit because the steel comes in dirty, and you don't want dirt in your welds. See? See what I mean? See? All right, so once you got all four corners welded up on both pieces, now it's time to weld our bracket on there. And this is super simple. They put these slots here where these brackets just slip right inside, just like so. So there's no measuring or anything involved. And then the cylinder will go through here. Again, make sure you take your bushings out because you don't want to weld this with the bushings in there. The only thing you do have to do is make sure this is square. So the tube goes in there straight and it's centered and it won't get binding or anything like that in there. So these magnets come in handy. You wanna make sure it's square with this, but you also wanna make sure it's square this way as well. So put a couple of squares on there just to double check everything and then we'll tack it in place. The other thing you can do to square it up is use a tape measure and just make sure it's equal at several points. Now there's two different ways to do this according to whichever tube bender you have. I've got the Woodward Fab one, so when I put that tube in there, it's going to be centered. And then on this tube, you want to weld on the inside, not the outside. Just the inside around is good enough to hold it in place. So this tube is three and three quarters long, and we've got outside to outside about three and three eighths, which if I'm doing my math right, is about a three eighths difference. So we should have three sixteenths on both sides. Double check our measurement, perfect. Dead on. Just kind of making sure we're still square. If everything looks good, start to burn it in place. All right, I got that all welded up. I opted for welding on the inside of this right here, just because this is gonna be under a tremendous amount of pressure. You got that hydraulic ram and whatever bar you're pushing through it, so it should be super strong. Now let's go mount it on our tube bender and we'll see what happens. So this is the Woodward Fab Bender and right here on the end is where the handle goes and ordinarily without the hydraulic assist you would get a giant pipe or something and try to wrestle this thing over. But with this swag kit we don't need the handle so we're going to take this off. When I built this thing I knew I wanted to do this air over hydraulic assist because there's no way I was going to try to manhandle and wrestle this thing so I didn't even put the handle on there. But we do need to take this bolt off and I'll probably loosen this other one just to be able to get this shaft thing out of here and get the new one in there. We'll leave it a little loose for now so we can position this wherever we want it once we got our cylinder up on there. Speaking of our cylinder, ta-da! So this is the eight ton long ram air over hydraulic jack from Hobo Fright, which is the one that's recommended for the swag kit. All the holes are cut to the correct side. Boom, just like that. Now we need to do a couple of things to this thing first before we install it on the tube bender stand. 
first thing we do, since we just took this out of the box, is we need to bleed everything. Now this already has some oil in it from the factory, but according to the instructions, we'll need to add more oil. So to do that, we're gonna remove this rubber plug and then we'll top it off with some fluid just to where it kind of starts to come out a little bit and then we'll pump it. And when fluid starts to come out that hole, we know we're good. Just make sure your valve is closed on the bottom. Now we're gonna install our thumb screw. This pin right here that makes it kind of like a T is what grabs a hold of your bar here normally to loosen it and tighten it. So we're gonna attempt to drive that out of there so we can use it for our thumb screw. It's starting to go. There we go. There it is. Would be nice if this kit included a roll pin. That would be a lot easier instead of trying to finagle with this Chinese piece of crap. There we go, there we go, got it. When you install the ram onto your tube bender, you wanna make sure that the thumb screw to close the valve is facing up. If it's to the side or down, your tube ram will not work. Then grab yourself a 19 millimeter socket and a wrench and torque them down to 70 foot pounds. All right, and down here at the business end, we gotta take off this bolt as well to get this part here to go through. So, we'll loosen this one just like we did on the other one to try to get that guy out of there and... Actually, don't think we'll need it to loosen that one. Came right out. All right, cool. Now the kit comes with this bar here that goes through the hole in your jack. And then this collar here is what keeps it kind of centered on the shaft. And you want that on the top side because of all the weight of this thing going this way, it's gonna to wanna to bind this way. So it's gonna keep it level. And there we go. Let's hook up some air to it and let's see what happens. Looks like it's working. Maybe we should try to bend a pipe. Let's try to bend a pipe. I got my engine 5 8 pipe installed in here and we'll just go until we take some of the slack out. Still loose. All right, there we go. Now we got it. So put this pointer at zero. Now we're gonna do a 90 degree bend and there is a little bit of spring back once you get to 90. So we'll go a little bit beyond 90. We got almost to about 65 before this thing maxed out. So we'll release the tension, move the pin on the die to the next slot, and then we'll keep going. Ninety degrees. So I've used this tube bender in the last week or two to make some railing for a handicap ramp. And after using it, there's a few things that I would do a little differently. The first thing is Swag offers a return spring. It's like 40 bucks, but it's gonna make your life a lot easier. You can wrestle this thing back down, but since there's no pressure on it, it's kind of a pain. And if you gotta do a lot of bends, this will wear you out pretty quickly. And the whole point of doing the air over hydraulic ram is to let the machine work for you. And the second thing is I'm toying with the idea of putting casters on my tube bender stand that I made because trying to move this thing around, it's really really top heavy with that ram sticking out and the bender itself is super heavy. So instead of using this wheel, I may design like a T or a cross or something, put some casters on there so it's a little bit easier to handle. Other than that, I'm super happy with this kit. I'm super happy with the way it all works. So go ahead and check out swagoffroad.com. They got a lot of products that will make your life a lot easier working around the shop, especially if you're doing any kind of metal work. And they're a great company. They're great to work with. And I like to support companies that have great products and take care of their customers. Anyway, I hope this helped you out. If it did, make sure you hit that like button down there. Share, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. And check out the social socials down here. Get yourself a t-shirt over here. Make sure you chew all your food and make sure you swallow and I'll see you on the next one.